No, well, I, I tell you what, after after Saturday's practice, you know, uh, Monday we're going to go into uh, this is the depth chart for the uh, for the upcoming game, and that's and these guys know what everybody's the guys that are on the bubble performing and whether or not they're going to get get any playing time or guys that are that are pushing a starter, you know, whether it's on regular offense, defense, uh, you know, have an opportunity on special teams. So, uh, matter of fact, today is a special teams practice, and so there'll be a lot of evaluating going on. Robert has had has had a very productive camp, and you know, he, the other day he kicked a, a 50 yarder along with Chris Hickenbine. But I think as far as the accuracy and, and keeping track of who's making the most, Robert Robert's winning that battle. Uh, you know, so far, you know, um, you know, the guys are guys that are here are committed. The guys that were having academic issues, um, you know, have, have hung in there, and and uh, you know, there's there's still one player I'm still waiting to hear on, but uh, you know, it's uh, these guys want to play here. You know, they, they they like school here. They see life after football opportunities here, and so uh, we're going to do everything we can to make sure they can realize that. Uh, other than the normal, you know, strains and pulls and things, you know, hamstrings here and there. Um, but I think uh, Mike Parker was here this morning, practice. Uh, Jared Dietrich, uh, practice. He was here this morning, he's practicing. Um, so, you know, there might be some guy. Don Inman had a little bit of a, uh, uh, you know, couldn't remember what day it was. He missed two practices, so now he's back. He can remember what day it was. I said, what day is it? He said, it's camp. I said, all right, that's good enough. <laughs> and um, so, you know, um, and there's, you know, Ross eyes, a little, little twinge there a little bit, but, you know, no, nothing, nothing that's, uh, that, that's sidelining anybody for a significant period of time. I don't know if I'll say his name, but uh, he's a guy that, uh, you know, that uh, will learn how to, because even the, the new rules particularly were blows to anything above the neck is, is going to be looked at. And uh, after it was, after what happened, uh, you know, it was, a, it was an accident, you know, it wasn't intentional. But uh, the subsequent practices after that have been very cognizant of receivers, our guys, coming across the middle. You know, we know you can make a big hit. Let's make a play on the ball now. So, uh, and the plus they're all friends now. Everything's all good. Well, you know, today, like I said, today is another big period of it. Um, the technique of covering punts, of, of, of protecting, or, uh, you know, uh, or running down on kickoffs and, and you know, who those people are going to be catching the ball. And so you know, we, we started out, a lot of, a lot of jobs were, were open. And as we're this practice and as we're moving forward here, we're going to start, you know, weaning the list down because, um, uh, you know, a guy like uh, Ray Horn, you know, because of the run he had the other day at the scrimmage at the stadium, we're going to put him back there and let him uh, return kickoffs. You know, Dominic Wallace, I mentioned about running backs, with the, the talented running backs that we have, trying to find ways to put the ball in their hands. Well, he may run back kicks also, you know, so just trying to find ways to get, uh, get the ball in, the, in those guys' hands. You know, they're, they're de developing, uh, you know, at pace, and they're, they're developing well. Um, we're seeing a lot of things. Our defense is doing a lot of things. And, uh, you know, defenses a lot of times are more out in front because of by nature, they're an attack aggressive style in the offensive line and, and the receivers and running backs have to recognize the stunts, the blitzes and all those things. So the only thing that's melting away right now is some of the, some of the fat percentage on these bodies out there for those guys, uh, which is a good thing um, because the weather like this and practicing like this is getting us in game shape. You know? And that's what's important. The big guys like that are getting game plan shape because they're always pushing, tug, tugging on people got to run and you know things you know things of that nature so so far um, they, they, they've done a nice job of communicating um, you know, recognizing fronts I mean that's what that's what's supposed to do and as I said this week this, this the next couple practices before school starts are going to be critical to the development of, of everyone but particularly them as well now they're getting there you know they're getting there I mean uh, you look at Morgan Moses and Pastor, you know, just all those guys that, uh, that Brandon Horgan spent a lot of time in, in the weight room, you know, increasing squats, power cleans, you know, 
in the bench press. I mean, that's what offensive linemen should do. You'd like to have a bunch of them that are all playing that are fourth and fifth year guys, but you know, that's not what we have. Uh, but you gotta you gotta play the guys that you have. And you know, Sean Castellano is gonna be a good player. You know, he played some last year and is still into the development stage right now, but you look at his body now, the way it's changed you know, since last year has been uh, it's been, a, been a positive thing. So um, you know, we're uh, and we're trying to find the right mix, you know, the five plus two more that can go in and play, you know, guard or tackle position. A couple of them have shown they'll mix it up. I mean, obviously, in order to run the ball, you, you know, sometimes teams that stop the ball, they bring down a safety. They have eight men in the box, so sometimes you're going to have to crack that safety. Or you're going to have to stalk a cover two corner. And, you know, Chris Bird is probably one of our better special teams guys that can that, – that can transform over into having that defensive mentality uh, as a as a cover guy on punts, but also offensively to you know to be able to block you know, uh, you know safeties and, and corners. Uh, I think Dontrell Inman has probably been a pleasant surprise for us. Uh, you know, making the move to you know to, to doing really some really good things here, catching long balls, uh, running great routes, catching the ball, and then Dontrell is not not afraid to mix it up. So, uh, but you know when you got you're, you're a little light like Tim Smith and you know, Jared, Jared Green. You, know, you could you could get off a stock block versus them if you were a DB, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, but that's part of it. You know, we got to find guys that uh, that can help us block on the perimeter. Um, you know, Ray Keys is a physical guy. Uh, you know, so uh, Matt Schneider, very physical guy. So being a receiver, catching the ball is important, but being able to block is is, is equally important. First opponent, you're always not sure about what they're going to be doing uh, because of the new changes and, and everything. But what you try to what you try to do is just work on the things that you suspect or you you could kind of guess at what they're going to try to do based on where the coordinators are from, the background of them, and you know, who they've been influenced by. But then you also just try to work on the, the fundamental parts of running, you know, the offense and the defense and the blocking and tackling of that. Because regardless of scheme. Whatever our first opponent has, uh, we're still going to have to block, tackle, make the plays, or make the blocks that we need to do to make our our plays work. So a lot of that we spend on on us, but uh, and there'll, be, there'll be some also spent on what you know what the the game like situation will be. There's there's not like anybody standing out. Uh, you know, Morgan Moses is the second team right tackle right now. Uh, B.J. Cabell has been out, so Matt Mahalik has had to be a guard you know, on both sides, so he's shown some versatility. Mike Price has been a center. Luke Buenco was a guard, but also now he's a, kind of the battling for the second center slot. A center slot. So it's, uh, it, it's the, the battle for, for, the, for the who's next in the game is ongoing because you have a guy like Morgan Moses who's going to keep it in one position, but you have Mahalik that can play both guards either side, and Bowenko that, although he's a right guard, he can play center also. So we're trying to find out who of the, that group right there would be, you know, the sixth, seventh, eighth guy in the game. Not really. I mean, in, in my office, my degree is hanging on the wall, and I look to the left, and there it is right there. That's what I think about Richmond now. But um, there'll be time to think about, you know, to think about them. Uh, you know, Coach Scott has done a great job with those guys. There's like, three of their defensive players are are up for the uh, the best uh, defensive player at, F at the FCS level. So, and I know them, and they're they're all very good players. So, um, I'll, I'll I'll wait to have nightmares about them later on. Right now, my nightmares about what's going on with my team. And uh, but you know, like I said, it's uh, the, the time the time will come where you just you start focusing your energies, uh, you know, on all that. But with school school right around the corner, a couple more practices left. We're just kind of focusing on what we're doing.